In today's Inkscape lesson, we'll take a look at some neat shapes we can create using the Power Stroke Path Effect, including how to use it with the pencil and pen tools. Before we can use the Power Stroke Path Effect, we need to create a path that we can attach it to. So let's switch to the pen tool here and create one. We can create some curves by clicking and dragging. To finish the path, we can either press the Enter key or right click. OK, and we also need to increase the stroke width a bit so that we will be able to see the results of Power Stroke. To do this easily, we can right click the stroke width value down here in the status bar and choose something thicker. Alright, to add the Power Stroke Path Effect to this path, we first have to go to Path, Path Effects to open the Path Effects dialog, then click this plus button at the bottom of the dialog, and finally click on Power Stroke here. Now if we zoom in on the path some by putting our cursor near it, then holding Control and scrolling up the mouse wheel, and we can pan by holding down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse, we can now see that, by default, Power Stroke tapers the ends of the path. If we switch to the Node tool here, we can see these purple diamond handles near the nodes. We can move these along the path and use them to change the width of the path at that location. If we turn on this no jumping handles option, I've seen that it sometimes stops us from moving the handles, only letting us change the width with them. However, other times, like right now, it doesn't seem to work correctly. Anyway, we can also still move the nodes around and adjust the curves. If we hold control and click one of the diamond handles, it will add a new handle on top of it, which we can drag to a new location and adjust the width there. If we hold control and alt and click a handle, it will delete it. And if we hold shift and click one, it will bring up this dialog where we can give the handle a specific location on the path and a specific width. Right now we can move a handle onto a different segment of the path by dragging it past one of the other handles. And that's only because we have sort points checked here. If we uncheck it, now we can't drag handles past other handles. We can create like a dragon tail or something with this. If we turn sort points back on, it will go back to making it so the handles can pass each other. Another thing we can change is the method in which the width is interpolated along the path. Oh, let's use a different one. Also, if we have either Cubic Bezier Johan or Cubic Bezier Smooth selected, we can use this smoothness setting here to adjust the smoothness of the interpolation. The next setting here, Start Cap, lets us change the appearance of the path of the starting node. The default value of zero width makes the path tapered here. We also have butt, peak, round, and square. Similarly, we can change the appearance of the ending node with the end cap setting. For the join setting here, we need to create a path with a sharp corner. I'll create a sharp corner here by holding shift. Let's increase the stroke width. Then add the power stroke path effect to it. And switch to the node tool. Now adjust some things a bit.
Okay, so at the moment, the place where these two segments meet or join at the corner here is rounded. We have some other options for setting the join appearance, including beveled, extrapolated arc, miter, and spiral. With the miter option, which makes the join pointed, if we make the corner very sharp, the join might get beveled like this. To fix this, we simply have to set miter limit here to something higher, like 20. Now it's sharp again. The last setting we haven't looked at yet is width factor. With this, we can scale the width of the path uniformly. A cool thing about the power stroke path effect is that we can use it with either the pencil tool or the pen tool. If we drop down the shape box here, both the triangle in and triangle out options use the power stroke path effect. We might have to change the scale setting up here to make it work correctly. Changing the scale setting is basically the same as changing the width factor setting in the path effects dialog. We can also of course change the other settings. Another cool thing is that we can use the power stroke path effect along with other path effects. For example, I'll put shape back on none and switch to the spiral mode here, which uses the spiral spine path effect and create a path like this. Now let's raise the stroke width. Then we can add the power stroke path effect to it and go to the node tool and modify it. I can change the color of this, switch to the select tool, and duplicate the path by right clicking it and choosing duplicate. Flip it horizontally by pressing the H key, change the color, and now we can create something like this. As you can see, Power Stroke is a very versatile effect. I plan to make another video showing how to use it to create different flourishes. Alright, finally, if you want to be able to access all of the nodes of these paths, and not just the ones we created ourselves. We can finalize the path effects of the paths by selecting them and going to Path, Object to Path. Now if we switch to the Node tool, we have access to all of the nodes along the paths. Okay, that's how we can use the Power Stroke Path Effect. I hope you enjoyed the lesson, and I'll see you in the next one.